In this video series, I will be showing you how to diagnose and repair problems with your Whirlpool built gas dryer. The lint trap positioned at the right rear of the dryer top can easily determine this Whirlpool dryer design. While some cabinet variations through the years require examination to be able to access internal components, the basic design and inner workings of this Whirlpool built dryer remains the same. I learned at a young age that the best way to understand something is to take it apart, so that's what we're going to do in this video. In other videos, I will look more closely at troubleshooting temperature problems and strange noises. But for now, we're just going to tear it down and briefly explain the components that we encounter. Before we begin, let me just say that sheet metal is very sharp. I highly recommend the use of gloves when working on appliances. I have received stitches more than once due to careless mistakes. Also, make sure that the dryer is unplugged. So let's start at the top. First, remove the two Phillips head screws located just below the lint catcher. Be careful not to let these screws fall down into the lint trap. If you already did, don't worry, we'll get to that. Next, we bear hug the top of the dryer and pull forward slightly to release the top from the two clips attached to the dryer front. You can also use a flathead screwdriver or a putty knife by pushing the tabs inward to release them. Next, we are going to remove the dryer front. Pull the two 5 16 inch screws that pass through the bent side panels into the two small threaded clips placed over the holes of the front door panel. Now the front panel should lift off of the bottom retaining clips. I like to leave this door switch connected with the door closed for less confusing troubleshooting. On some models this is not possible, just be careful not to cut or apply too much tension to this door switch connection. The door switch actuator arm can physically break off. When this happens, it is unable to sense if the door is closed and assumes that it is open, not allowing any electricity to flow beyond the timer. You may hear the timer advance, but the motor and burner cannot operate. To replace it, disconnect its wiring connection, remove the two Phillips head screws that mount it in place, and replace it with the new switch. Now let's pull the drum. On the bottom right side, under the drum, you will find a belt tension pulley. To remove this, we will press the pulley in an arcing motion up and towards the right side of the dryer. This will allow slack in the belt so that it can be pulled slightly forward and off of the motor pulley. Now we can remove the drum. I like to use the belt as a handle for this as long as it's intact. This technique keeps the belt from getting hooked on things down below as you remove the drum and makes things a little easier. Before we start ripping out the guts of this thing, let's pull the back panel off. The rear panel of the dryer is held on by a handful of quarter inch screws. The back of the dryer is home to the thermal fuse, which is a temperature sensitive fuse that is designed to burn out and break electrical contact if the dryer becomes too hot. Also the cycling thermostat, which is responsible for regulating proper dryer temperature. And also the high limit thermostat, which is a safety switch similar to the thermal fuse designed to open if it senses that the dryer is becoming too hot. All of these components are held in place by a few quarter inch screws and are described in greater detail in the Troubleshooting Heating Problems video. Next, we're going to remove the blower housing located at the left of the dryer if you're looking at it from behind. This is also attached with a few quarter inch screws. You should also notice that the two Phillips head screws we removed earlier attach the top of the housing to the dryer top. So if you did drop those screws, the bottom of this section would be the best place to start looking. This blower actually sucks, strangely enough. It pulls air into itself from the drum through this housing and out through the dryer's duct. As it pulls air from the drum, a low pressure area is created. This effect creates the wind that will draw the heat generated by the burner into the drum to dry your clothing. Airflow is crucially important if the dryer is to heat properly. For more information on airflow and troubleshooting heating related problems, watch the Troubleshooting Heating Related Problems video at AppliantAssistant.com. Now back to the inside. The rollers are held in place by two plastic clips. The left side roller has a support bar held by a press on clip that can be removed by working it side to side while applying pressure from behind with a flat head screwdriver. Try not to put it through your other hand in the process. So 
Sometimes, if you are careful not to bend these clips, the triangle clips may be reused, but they usually require replacement after being removed. Let's pull the burner cover and get it out of the way. It is held in place by two 5 16 inch screws. Once these have been removed, tip the cover up and pull it free from the bulkhead tab. In some cases, the roller shafts may become ground down or misshapen if you've been tolerating a grinding or squeaking noise for a long period of time. The support roller shafts need to be perfectly round. It's also important to not apply lubrication to the roller shafts. Lubrication tends to attract lint and debris that creates unwanted friction and heat on the rollers. To replace the roller shaft, remove their mounting nut from the rear of the dryer, remove the bad shaft, and replace it with a new one in the same manner. Two strips of nylon material called the drum bearing support the front side of the dryer's drum. They are held in place by a few expanding clips that snap into the drum's edge. The drum's bearing slides over a strip of felt called the door felt, which is attached to the inside of the dryer's door. The bearing material or the door felt can become ground down if the drum is not installed properly and lead to grinding noises. In extreme cases that are ignored for a long period of time, unrepairable damage can occur. When reinstalling the drum, be sure that the drum's bearing is riding on top of the door felt. Another common source of noises is the rear dryer felt. The rear felt helps to reduce friction and noise caused by the drum's rotation, as well as acting as an air seal, which helps to maintain proper dryer airflow. When reinstalling the drum, take a moment for a few rotations. Inspect for any points where the rear felt may be folded under and correct them. Now onto the burner. The burner has several wires connected to different components. The igniter, the coils, the flame switch. Again, for more detailed information about each of these components, watch the troubleshooting heating problems video available at appliancesistant.com. The flame switch is held in place by one 5 16 inch screw. After this screw has been removed, it can be lifted from a small tab slot cut into the side of the burner tube. Use caution when disconnecting the flame switch. Support the terminals with a pair of needle nose pliers while you work the wires off. Now let's remove the igniter and the coils. To remove the burner coils, first disconnect the wires attached to them. There are small bumps on the coils that guarantee proper placement of the first and secondary burner coils. Then simply lift the coils from their posts. On to the igniter. The igniter is mounted to a plate that is attached to the burner tube. You can remove this plate with two 5 16 inch screws, but I prefer to loosen the 5 16 inch screw that holds the igniter to the mounting plate. Use caution not to touch the igniter while handling. It is extremely delicate and the oils in your skin can shorten its life expectancy creating hot spots. Some older models have a gas shutoff valve and a burner disconnect nut to disconnect the burner. Most newer models do not have this. The pipe is bent and held to the back of the dryer by a barbed clip and a 5 16 inch screw. If you have a disconnect nut, it will loosen by rotating the top of the nut towards the front of the dryer, clockwise from the burner's perspective. The burner base is held to the floor of the cabinet by a few 5 16 inch screws. Once they have been removed, you can remove the burner. This fitting is called the gas orifice. Swapping out these two fittings is all that is required to convert this style of dryer from natural gas to propane, also known as LP. The orifice fitting removes counterclockwise with a 3 8 inch wrench, and the regulator cap removes counterclockwise with a flathead screwdriver. Sometimes the air baffle also requires minor adjustment. Detailed instructions are supplied with the LP conversion kit, part number 49572. Next we will pull the blower and the motor. The blower is directly attached to the reverse side of the motor. 
To remove it, we will need to first pop the rear retaining clip by using a flathead screwdriver to compress the clip down while at the same time using the leverage of the screwdriver to pull the clip free from the tab that it is attached to. This will expose the square portion of the blower that is threaded onto the rear motor shaft. This is a relatively soft plastic nut that surrounds a smaller internal nut that threads onto the motor. It is very easy to strip and create a lot more work for yourself, so watch and listen carefully. With a 7 16 inch wrench, grab behind the front of the pulley where the belt would rest. There is a one-sided flat spot for you to mount your wrench. Use a 13 16 inch wrench or a large crescent wrench to hold the blower. You can then use the right side roller support as a stop. Now this is where some technique is needed. The front side wrench needs to turn in the clockwise direction to release the blower on the back side of the motor. If you turn it too slowly, the wrench on the blower side will strip the plastic surrounding the internal nut and you will be required to chisel the blower off to replace it. Turn the shaft until the rear wrench locks up against the right roller shaft. Then with one fast movement, turn the front side wrench clockwise. This should free the blower. Now with the blower off of the motor, we can remove the front motor retaining clip in the same way that we did the back one earlier. Notice that the points where the motor contacts the mounting plate, there is a small indentation that ensure proper motor position. The motor mounting clips are nearly impossible to install if the motor is not positioned properly into these slots. At this point, the blower wheel is free from the motor and can be removed. Next, let's look at how to reinstall the drum. Using the belt as a handle, carefully slide the drum back into place. The indentation on the back of the drum needs to rest down onto the support rollers. It's nice to have someone else hold the drum up into place while you reattach the belt. However, if no one is available, your shoulder can work just as well. The belt needs to be sitting in the same spot on the drum where it was before. With years of use, the belt generally will create a mark on the drum, giving you a very good idea as to where it needs to be positioned for the idler pulley. If the belt is out of place, it will roll off of the idler pulley in a few turns. Once the belt is on properly, push the drum back into place. Remember to check the rear felt for folding. Next, install the dryer's front panel. It should set down onto two clips mounted on the folded side panels. Then tip it up into place. The drum bearing needs to be on top of the door felt. Give the drum a few turns to ensure proper placement. Then reinstall the two 5 16 inch screws that hold everything into place. Now onto the console. With most designs, the internal components within the console can be accessed by removing the rear panel of the console attached with a few quarter inch screws. This will allow for testing and removal of console parts. So that about sums it up. We've seen how it all comes apart. You can learn more about common heating and noise related problems in other videos found at appliancesassistant.com. I hope this video is helpful and thank you for watching.